Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on Solve Proportional Relationships. Our real-world link is on one of my favorite kind of smoothies, and that's the fruit smoothie. Katie and some friends want to buy fruit smoothies. They go to a health food store that advertises a sale of two fruit smoothies for $5. Fill in the boxes to write a ratio that compares the cost to the number of fruit smoothies. Well, our cost is going to go on top. And so... $5 is going to get us two fruit smoothies. Now you could simplify that if you really wanted to to $2.50 for one smoothie if you wanted to divide it into a unit rate. What about six smoothies. Well, a couple different ways of going about this, but if it cost five dollars for two, well you could get two more for another five, and another five dollars to get you another two smoothies. Well, two, four, six smoothies, five, ten, fifteen dollars. Now, is the cost proportional to the number of fruit smoothies for two and six smoothies? Well, we've already broken it down and simplified this to $2.50 for one smoothie. Can we do that for 15 and six? Sure. If we divided by six on top and bottom, just like we divided by two on top and bottom there, we would once again get $2.50 for one smoothie. And so, as we look to explain this, we're going to say, yes, there is a constant ratio. Our key concept today is to write and solve proportions. A proportion is an equation stating that two ratios or rates are equivalent, such as 6 eighths equals 3 fourths. If you were to use what's called the cross products, 6 times 4 is 24. 3 times 8 is also 24. So the cross products of any proportion are equal. If we look at our guided example, after two hours, the air temperature had risen seven degrees Fahrenheit. Write and solve a proportion to find the amount of time it will take at this rate for the temperature to rise an additional 13 degrees Fahrenheit. So what they did here was they wrote a proportion. They let T represent the unknown time in hours. And again, notice we have Temperature over time equals temperature over time. So it rose 7 degrees in 2 hours. We want to find out in 13 degrees will be how many hours. And so just like the example above where we could say 6 times 4 was 24 and that equaled 3 times 8 which was 24, we can say the same thing. 7 times t, which we don't know yet, is going to equal 13 times 2. Well, 7 times t is 7t. 2 times 13 is 26. And now that we've simplified both sides, you can hopefully notice where we have a one-step equation. If we divide by that 7 on both sides, 26 divided by 7 is approximately 3 and 7 tenths. So it will take about 3 and 7 tenths hours to rise an additional 13 degrees Fahrenheit. And now that we've solved that question, let's take a look at our got it questions. We'll solve these three questions in the work zone on the left. So our first question for A is x over 4 equals 9 over 10. Well, what we want to do is to use our cross products. 
So one method to do is to circle the cross products so that 10 times x is going to equal 9 times 4. Well, 10 times x, we can simplify into 10x, is going to equal the right side of 9 times 4, which is simplified into 36. Next, we have this one-step equation that we need to solve for x. And so if we simply divide it by 10 on both sides of this equation, this is going to cancel out, and we're left with x equals whatever 36 divided by 10 is. Well, that solution is 3 and 6 tenths. So x equals 3 and 6 tenths is our answer for question A. What about question B? Well, question B is 2 over 34 equals 5 over y. Well, if we once again use our cross products, we have our 2y and we have our 34 and 5. So, 2 times y needs to equal 34 times 5. Now, the order in which you write these, you could write 34 times 5 on the left side and 2 times y on the right. Since they're equal to each other, it really doesn't matter which cross product you write on the left or right side. So don't get hung up on that. Now we have 2 times y simplifies into 2y. Equals 34 times 5 is 170. And now that we're down to this one-step equation, we solve for y by dividing by 2 on both sides. And y is going to equal 170 divided by 2, which is 85. So our solution for question B is y equals 85. And our last example on this page is question C. And that question is 7 over 3, or 7 thirds, equals n over 21. Well, once again, we can use our cross products. 7 with the 21, 3 with the n, so that 7 times 21 is going to equal the cross product of 3 times n. And as we simplify this, 7 times 21 is 147, and 3 times n is simply 3n. Now notice, our variable is here on the right side of the equation. So we need to divide by the 3 on both sides. So if we divide the right side by 3 and the left side by 3, this cancels here, and we're left with 49 equals n. And that is our solution for C. Next, we have guided example 2, which is a real-world example. If the ratio of type O to non-type O donors at a blood drive was 37 to 43, how many donors would be type O out of 300 donors? Well, we can use proportions to solve this question. And the way we're going to set this initially up is our type O donors, since that's what we're looking for, over the total donors. Well, the type O donors in this ratio is 37, which is why we have the 37 here. Now, in the question, we're not given directly the number of total donors. So what we need to do is add the 37 type O plus the 43 non-type O together to get an answer of 80. So that our initial ratio of type O donors to total donors is 37 over 80. So now that we have this initial ratio, 
we can use it to solve for the type O donors out of 300. And so we have our initial ratio again of 37 over 80 is going to equal now, we don't know the type O donors out of the 300, which is why it's our variable here of T over 300. And notice, we have type O over total equals type O over total. And now they cross multiplied 37 times 300 is going to equal 80 times T. 37 times 300 was 11,100 equals 80T. Divide by 80 on both sides, and you get 138 and 75 hundredths donors. Well, since we're talking about people here, we'll just round this up to 139 type O donors. And now we get to try this on our own. The ratio of 7th grade students to 8th grade students in a soccer league is 17 to 23. If there are 200 students in all, how many are in the 7th grade? Well, the 7th grade here is important. That's just like the type O in the previous example. So what we need to do is to write an initial ratio of 7th grade over total students. And so we'll move up to the top of our work zone here and say that we need to write a ratio of 7th grade over total. We need to have that initial ratio. Well, in the ratio it said it was 17 colon 23, which means that there were 17 7th graders over the total, again, wasn't directly given. But if we add the 17 plus 23 together, we can get a ratio of 17 seventh graders. The 17 plus 23 then is 40 total students. And so now, if we write a proportion using that, we're going to have the seventh graders over the total and also the seventh over the total on the right side of it. And so, we'll use our initial ratio of 17 over 40, and now that's going to equal, we don't know the number of seventh grade in our large ratio. So that's going to be our x. But we were given in the problem 200 students in all. And so that's our total for our larger ratio, 200. So notice again, we have 7th over total equals 7th over total. And now we can solve like we did in guided example 1 and go, okay, cross products. 17 with the 200 and 40 with the x. So 17 times 200 is going to equal 40 times x. 17 times 200 is 3,400. Equals 40 times x, which is simply 40x. And like our example c, our variable is now on the right side, and so we're going to divide by the 40 on both sides here of our equation so that this cancels and 3,400 divided by 40 is exactly 85. So if there are 200 students in all, how many are in the seventh grade? Well, 85 students. Now as we continue on with our lesson, we're going to look at our next key concept, and that is to use unit rate. You can also use the unit rate to write an equation expressing the relationship between two proportional quantities. So in guided example three, Olivia bought six containers of yogurt for $7.68. Write an equation relating the cost C to the number of yogurts y. 
how much would Olivia pay for 10 yogurts at the same rate? So what we need to do is to find the unit rate first between cost and containers. Well, we're going to take our cost over our containers. So $7.68 over 6 divide gets us $1.28 per container. So our cost is going to be $1.28 times the number of containers of yogurt. So cost equals $1.28 times y, where y is the number of yogurts. We're told there's 10 yogurts, so $1.28 times 10 gets us $12.80. So the cost of 10 containers of yogurt is $12.80. So just Writing the equation is one more way of solving these. What about a guided example four? JC bought eight gallons of gas for $31.12. Write an equation relating the cost C to the number of gallons G of gas. How much would JC pay for 11 gallons at the same rate? Well, what we need to do is to find the unit rate between cost and gallons. So cost over gas, $31.12 over the 8 gallons is $3.89 per gallon. So what our total cost now is going to be is $3.89 times the number of gallons. We can write the equation then. Cost C is equals $3.89 times the number of gallons. We're told in our question it's 11 gallons, which is why we substitute in 11 for the G, multiply, and we get $42.79. So the cost of 11 gallons of gas is $42.79. So if we look at our last got it question in this lesson, Olivia typed two pages in 15 minutes. Write an equation relating the number of minutes M to the number of pages P typed. How long will it take her to type 10 pages at this rate? And so we do need to make sure we write this equation. And like the previous two examples, we first need to find the unit rate between pages and minutes. When looking for what's going to go on the bottom, what you're looking for the unit of, use your question to help. We're looking for 10 pages at this rate. So the pages is going to go on the bottom bottom. So we're going to do for our unit rate minutes over pages. And so we had in our question two pages in 15 minutes. So 15 minutes over two pages. And now if we divide by two we'll get a unit rate of 7 and 5 tenths, which is the same as 7 and a half minutes, for every page. And we can use that now to write an equation. We're looking for the total number of minutes to the number of pages typed. So M is going to equal the seven and a half minutes, so seven and five tenths, times the number of pages. Because it's seven and a half minutes per one page. And that's the equation. Now in our question, we're looking for 10 pages. So we're going to substitute the 10 in for P. M equals seven and five tenths times 10. I'm going to multiply those together. M equals 75. So our answer here is 75 minutes. Now, if you wanted to take the extra step and say, well, an hour is 60 minutes, and so this is going to be one hour and 15 minutes, that would work too. And that is it for this lesson on Solve Proportional Relationships. Good luck.